In this lecture, I will show you how to write and read cookies in Google Tag Manager. By reading and writing cookies via Google Tag Manager, you can take Google Tag Manager's functionality to the next level. Before I show you how this is done, let's talk about what's a cookie. Cookie is a small text file that gets placed on your computer when you visit a site. Most of the websites you visit will place these cookies. Cookies help website owners in developing a great and seamless customer experience across pages, across sessions, with analytics tracking, as well as advertising. A cookie that gets placed on your computer, or sometimes you'll hear me say dropped on your computer, is tied to the domain that places it. This cookie is also tied to the browser that you use to visit that site. So if you use Chrome on one of your visits and then IE for another visit, then you will get two different cookies placed in two different browsers. The format of a cookie is a name value pair. There is a name of the cookie and the value associated with it. In addition, it also has an expiration date. This is the date and time when the cookie will expire. That means it will no longer be available for the site to use. The expiration date and time you use for a cookie depends on the purpose of that cookie. Some cookies, you set them to expire at the end of the session, while others, you might expire after a few days or even years. You decide according to your website policies and the purpose of the cookie to decide what the expiration date will be. Let's take a look at an example of a cookie. I'm using the edit this cookie extension of Chrome to see the cookies. You can either use this extension or you can use the settings within your browsers to look for the cookies. But for this example, I'm going to use this extension. Clicking on this extension will open up a window that will show me all the cookies that are being set from this domain. So here are all the cookies. Expanding on any of these cookies will show me the name of the cookie, the value associated with that cookie, the domain, and the expiration date. You can go through all these cookies. The name is listed right here and expand to see the value and expiration date. These cookies are placed by your developers or the third party tools that you use on your site. What I'm going to show you in this lecture is how you can use Google Tag Manager. What I'm going to show you in this lecture is how you can use Google Tag Manager to write a cookie as well as read the cookie written by Google Tag Manager or any of these cookies. So if these cookies are written by your developers, then what's the purpose of GTM here? Well, the matter of fact is that you can't wait for developers to make all the changes that you require. By knowing how to write cookies and read cookies via GTM, you can actually do a lot of work without getting a developer involved. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you. What you will need to make this happen is use a custom HTML tag within Google Tag Manager some JavaScript code that I'm going to provide you. However, if you want to customize what you want to use in these cookies, then you will have to learn a little bit of JavaScript. However, the code that I'm going to show you will give you information on how to get started. And then first party cookie variable that's already available in Google Tag Manager. So let's dive in to Google Tag Manager. In Google Tag Manager, we need a tag that'll set the cookie. So for that, click on tags and click on new. Give your tag a name. For this example, I'm going to make a very simple tag. All this tag will do is show you how you can write a cookie. Once you start to use this functionality for your own tags, you'll give it a more meaningful name. For now, I'm just going to call it cookie write. Then click on the middle and choose custom HTML. In this area, we will put our JavaScript that will allow us to write a cookie. I already have a piece of JavaScript that I'm going to use. I will walk you through that JavaScript so you can understand what I'm doing. So let me walk you through this JavaScript so you can understand and customize it according to your needs. 
first I'm defining a variable called cookie name. This is the name of the cookie. I'm calling it GTM test. Then I have another variable called cookie value. This is the value that we will set for this cookie. Then you have expiration date. This is where you can put the number of days you want this cookie to live. In order for JavaScript to work and dates to add, you need to convert your days into milliseconds. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Expiration days times 24, because there are 24 hours in a day, times 60 to convert it into minutes, and then multiply again by 60 to convert it into seconds, and then finally multiply by 1000 to convert it into milliseconds. However, keep in mind, if you want to expire the cookie in number of hours, then you'll have to change this calculation. Right now, I'm just setting it for number of days so that this formula will work. But whatever you are using, convert your time into milliseconds. Then I create a new date variable. In this line, I get the current date and time from this variable. So I'm holding the current date time in this variable. Next, Set the time for the D variable with the current date time and adding in expiration milliseconds. So we're basically saying whatever the current date time is, add these many milliseconds to it and set that value for D. Now the D will be set to the expiration date of the cookie. Once that's done, convert all these date variables into string because we can only pass string value to create the cookie. And then document.cookie is a way of writing the cookie in the current document. What we are setting here is cookie name with a cookie value, then set the value of cookie expiry date, and then some JavaScript to set this cookie for all subdomains of the current domain. Once that's done, go ahead and click save. Then it's going to ask you to add a trigger Click on add trigger. We're going to fire this on all the pages. So click on all pages and then go ahead and save it. Now put your tag manager in preview mode. I'm going to go to the site and it'll be loaded in the preview mode. As you can see on this one, cookie right got fired. Let's click on it and we can see our code. Now I'm going to verify this cookie. So I'm going to go up on my browser, bring in my edit this cookie extension. Here's our GTM test, expand it, value is set to one. And here you can see it's going to expire a day after. Once done, you can close it. Now you know how to write a cookie using Google Tag Manager. So now let's take a look on how to read this cookie. I've covered this in past lectures, but I'm gonna go through this again. So go to your Google Tag Manager and click on variables. Let's create a new variable. So click on new and let's call it GTM test cookie. Click in the middle and pick first party cookie because we just set one first party cookie. For the cookie name, you can provide the name of the cookie that we set which was GTM test. Remember this is case sensitive, so make sure this name matches exactly the name of the cookie. Once done, go ahead and save it. So refresh your preview mode. Every time you make a change to Google Tag Manager, make sure to refresh your preview mode. Go back to your page and refresh it. Scroll down and let's check the variables. Click on variables and click on page view. Scroll down and find the variable that we just created. Here it is, GTM test cookie. It's returning the value of one. So we're setting the value by a custom HTML and then we are also able to read it using first party cookie variable. Now keep in mind, this cookie does not do much. However, the concept I showed you can be leveraged for your specific use cases and really use the power of writing cookies.